Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about a few uh, other uh, interesting topics in Excel, including the document templates that Excel has, creating hyperlinks, exporting your Excel to PDF, hiding and protecting data and sheets, and then creating checkboxes. So let's get started. So one of the things that I always found very uh, interesting and super helpful is once you go under file and you want to create a new document, then it's not just the uh, blank workbook that we create all the time. It has lots of different things under these different tabs, business, personal, planners, and tracker list, budget charts, and calendars that uh, are super useful uh, for any business, um, any kind of uh, financial work, for uh, planning your work, and so on and so forth, right? So, for example, if you go under business, right, you have all sorts of things if you want to create an invoice, right? Or you want to create an inventory list. Let's say you want um, a ledger. You want um, uh, timesheets. Or if you go back here under um, personal, then you have loan calculator. Yeah, that is a very good one, right? If you have a loan and you want to create the amortization chart, this is one good one for you, okay? And uh, although you can make it yourself, it's not a big deal. Probably in one of my future videos, I'll create one. But uh, you probably uh, have seen, if you go on the website that uh, you pay your monthly mortgage, uh, in the past, they used to have these amortization charts very easily accessible. Now, for myself, I know that uh, recently when I go there and try to look at my amortization chart, they kind of make it very hard to access and I would say recently kind of impossible to access. It's just enough that they find out, uh, for example, you are paying a little bit more than what you should. You're paying additional principles and these people don't like it so they try to <laughs> hide the facts from you and not allow you see how much you are saving and uh, paying less interest by paying more principal so here this one can give you that information without the need for anybody so let's say for example you have you bought a new house and the new house is like 300k and you have an annual interest of let's say 3.5% you want to pay it in uh, 30 years so you can edit this okay the start day of the loan is today and then it would tell you that hey each month you have to pay about thirteen hundred forty seven dollars and guess what you have to pay 184 grand 185 grand of interest and this is the uh, um, amortization charge as you can see the beginning balance the payments the principal and the interest so if you see initially you are paying mostly interest right uh, 875 is interest 472 is principal so your interest is almost twice as much as principal in the beginning you are not really getting rid of any major uh, principal right so you are paying tons and tons of interest Okay, so it shows you exactly how you can go all the way to the end of the 30 years where you can settle it down and finally make it zero. Okay, so it has some very, very uh, beautiful things here. And I absolutely uh, love this amortization chart. And uh, if you don't want, let's say, something like that, let me close it. You can have lots of other things, right? So remember, I showed you loan calculator. You can go and work on your personal expenses. You want to create a family tree. That is a nice one. Um, you want to work on an event calendar, a party planner, a weekly schedule. Very, very useful. 
I always recommend to my students. Planners, definitely. Okay. Now, here is specific for amortization, but you have also gun charts, you have sale invoice, and so on and so forth. So, uh, many of these are extremely useful. Okay. Very, very useful. I'm just scrolling fast over them so that you see what kind of documents are available as templates and you don't have to start from scratch and creating all of this by inserting tons of formulas and adding all these nice graphics and everything you can just go ahead and um, and you can see everything here too on this uh, right side you see all the categories right there are tons of things here even it has something for social media and uh, there is a lot more, okay? So you want calendars, these calendars, it has very beautiful calendars that are editable and so on and so forth, okay? So um, these are very good resources if you want to save time. If, for example, uh, you want to put your um, assignments, right? on a planner or anything so you don't forget when to submit what then these student assignments are definitely good ones okay so anyway you have the document templates take advantage of them the other thing you have is hyperlink and exporting to PDF so uh, many times when you create some um, uh, file you also want to refer to some external website as a reference and so you want to create a hyperlink right so let's say for example here this plus remember uh, yesterday i um, made this video on um, pie charts right and this was the uh, ethnic distribution of population in the united states maybe you want to mention some what some website, right, as your resource. So you might say, hey, my resource, correct, or source, not resource really, my source is some website, let's say Wikipedia or whatever. So that's not really the uh, most reliable one, but if you go here and say um, ethnic population of USA, if it gives you a percentage somewhere, the best place probably is the census gov, right? GOV, that's probably a good one. So here, you see, you can use these numbers if you want. So it says Hispanics are about 18, so I was not too off. Whites are 76, African Americans 13, Asians are um, 6%. And then the others, you can probably add these guys together, right? So you can use this and say census.gov. And uh, now if you want, you can add a link so the people can go and click on here and when they click, it automatically from Excel goes to uh, Internet Explorer or Chrome or whatever uh, browser and takes them to the website where you got this data from. Okay, so uh, here, let's say this one was 73% and 13, 18. These guys was 6%. I guess this rest is less than that. So this is like, well, it cannot be these numbers. Some of them is not going to work out. But uh, anyways, uh, let's say I want to add some hyperlink here, right? So I select this cell or maybe this text here, correct? And then if you go under insert, it should allow you to do hyperlink, but for a cell, not for this text. So you see for the text, it is not available if you select the text. But if you click on that cell, then it allows you to insert the hyperlink. And here you can type in the URL and say OK. And boom, that's it. 
now whenever you want to see this source you go here and just do one click and it should directly take you to the source website okay now uh, it's thinking a little bit but there we go takes you directly to where you got the information so it's very good if you want to add more credibility to your presentations and so on always make sure to add hyperlinks okay and um, The other thing that I wanted to show you is, uh, if you look at this hyperlink again, maybe you don't need to go to a URL. Maybe you are getting it from some local drive or something, right? So it does not need to be basically a web page. You can link it to some place, maybe in this document, right? For example, Let's say when you click on something here, it takes you to another sheet in this document where you have explanation or data about that parameter, right? Or it is uh, linked to an email address or it is linked to somewhere local in your computer, like a shared drive that everybody can access, right? Because many times when you are presenting, you are not going to... Uh, basically add all of the data that you need for your presentation to your Excel file. So many times you add this hyperlink, so when you click on it, it takes you to your local drive where you can open those files and show if somebody asks. Or let's say it is in another sheet here in the same uh, workbook, and when you click on that, then it takes you to that sheet, okay? So um, maybe here uh, I'll show you one more, but you, you got the idea, right? That, for example, uh, let me go and see if I have anything nice for you somewhere. Um, so, uh, functions could be good, but plots probably better, right? So here, you see this, this number here, this K? I got it from somewhere, right? Let's say I got this K, the spring constant, from a, um, a hooks experiment. And now I have the data for that hooks experiment. So if I want, I can just go ahead and here add a hyperlink for this. And I can refer it to place in this document. And you see here, it can take me to any of the sheets. And in that sheet, I can have information. So let's say I want to add a sheet here. And this sheet is going to be the uh, hooks experiment for the linear spring constant. And here I have some data and so on and so forth, right? So I have some X and I have some F. And then from a linear regression, I could get the values of X and F. We'll talk about that later. But let's say when you click on that K, it should bring you to this um, uh, sheet here, right? Which we call sheet one. Or if you don't want, change the name of it. Call it hooks experiment, right? So now when I go to uh, my plots, bring it closer to here although you don't have to but when you go and click on this plot here then you add a hyperlink to it and then say someplace in this document and I said okay where you say to the hook experiment right and you okay that so now you see here it has the blue hyperlink and when you click on it boom it goes to this tab so this is very, very useful, this hyperlink that uh, can be referring to any place and local drive in the documents online and so on. Okay, one other thing we have to talk about is exporting some or all of your sheets to uh, uh, a PDF file for sharing with other people. So sometimes you don't want to share your source Excel file 
you just want to create a PDF and share it with other people. You know, Microsoft Office, when you open it in different computers, sometimes the format of it is distorted. And the other thing is, well, you might not even want the people who is looking at it to be able to modify anything. So you just want to share a PDF of it, right? And so if you want, you can easily convert all of these sheets or specific ones to PDF and share it with people, right? So what you need is to go to the Acrobat uh, tab, and here you have Create PDF, right? And even you can email it as well. So I want to create a PDF, and it says which sheet? You say maybe plots. I only want the plots. Anything else that you want, you click on it, and then you add it to the right side. So anything on the right side will be published. Anything on the left side will not. So if you don't want these functions, eh, click and remove it, right? So anything you want, click on it, and then move it to the right side by clicking on Add. So let's say I'm only right now interested in plots. And then I say actual size of the page or fit it to a uh, worksheet to a single page or anything like that, and then convert. Okay, and uh, first it asked me to save. It's okay, let's see now. There we go, so just let me call it plots. And try to convert it and it does and once it published you can share it as a PDF with anybody that you want. Okay, so there we go, it opens it for you. Now here, clearly it is not publishing it in one page, that's why you see it is kind of messed up. So you have to make sure to, uh, when you publish it here, you have to go and uh, check these options of fit to the paper width or make it actual size or uh, make sure that uh, you choose the appropriate uh, option. So let me save it again as this. And let's see the difference between them. Right, so make sure you choose the appropriate save option. And now you see it is all saved as one page. Okay, so uh, this is about sharing as a PDF. What else? So uh, sometimes you have some data and you don't, although you have used them for some calculations and so on, but you don't want to show them to the people that you are presenting. You want to hide them, okay? So let's say here, I'm going to show a histogram of this data to somebody, but I don't want to show the data themselves because, for example, there might be some names here. So like this is Alex, this is me, this is uh, Joe, this is uh, Katie, this is uh, Nicole, and this is, uh, uh, let's say, Jax, and so on and so forth, right? I have a bunch of names here. And here, I'm going to show the histogram of them. That's fine. Even they can see the grades as long as they don't know who those grades belong to, right? I want to... Uh, uh, observe some confidentiality. So what I can do, I can hide this column B when I'm presenting. So all I need is click here on the top and highlight column B. So you see here on the top it is green. Then I right click and say what? Hide. Boom. Okay? It's not there anymore. It is there, but I'm not seeing it. I hide it. And you can see why it is hidden or how it is hidden by looking at the top. Instead of one line at the border of that, you have a double line. So you see there is something here that is hidden. And if you want, you see, you can bring it back, right, like that, or you can unhide it. So this is about hiding data. But better than that, or not better, com complementary to that is protecting something. So let's say here I have entered some numbers, some names, and so on. And now I'm sharing it with somebody, but I do not want those people to be able to modify anything here. I want to protect this. Okay, I do not want them to be able to modify any cell or any value here. 
how would you do that so here if you go to the review tab then you have the protect sheet and protect workbook protect workbook means protect all of the sheets sheet is one specific one so let's say I want to protect this sheet right so I click on protect sheet it is asking you to um, provide some password and you have to be careful to remember that password if you uh, don't remember that password you cannot retrieve the data back okay so here I type in some password ask you to uh, re-enter it I did and now the sheet is protected as you can see I can click on this unprotect provide the password again and make it uh, available for uh, modifications but right now right if I click on any cell and try to type in anything you see hey this is protected you need to have the password to do anything or these guys where the number is if I try to do anything boom it's locked okay it is protected I cannot do that so I have to go and say unprotect and that's where I need to have the password otherwise I cannot do anything now that it's unprotected I can do whatever I want okay so this protection is always a uh, good idea and um, so you see I could lock the whole sheet I could lock um, the um, whole workbook if I want which includes all of the sheets and uh, if you want you can also lock a portion of a sheet so you don't need to lock all of the cells in the sheet you might just leave some portion of it off so that um, those portions are not uh, protected and while the rest of the cells are protected those are not so you can leave them off right so let's say this cell or this range of cells I want them to not be protected correct so right now it is not in protect mode I can do whatever I want but if I go ahead and say protect it for me it is gonna lock it right correct remember so here I provide this and confirmation and now it is locked good so now is there any way that I can unprotect these cells that I can enter in those but nowhere else so let's say here I um, right now it's in uh, protect mode so I cannot even change the color but is there anything I can do with here you see once it is in lock mode no but let's do something so first let's go back and unprotect it first so that I can do some modifications good so let's say these cells I want to be not protected but the rest of it is so here let's say I just apply some color to it to mark them and now if I right click here right so then you can go down to format cells and then under protection you can say whether you want them to be locked or not locked if you uncheck this those guys are not going to be locked okay so now if I go back to review and protect it again right again you see here it's locked everywhere is locked but look here I can type something okay so those I can leave as free so I can uh, do whatever I want to them okay so this is uh, basically selectively lock or unlock some cells within a sheet. Okay, one last thing I want to tell you is about checkboxes. So let's say you, you've seen when you want to go and get a quote for car insurance, it asks you some questions and then you can check or uncheck it and then based on those, it is going to give you some uh, quote, right? So let's say you want to create something like that. Well, here you want to allow the user to do a check or uncheck whether this thing is true or not. And uh, you want to make it a little bit fancier, a little bit more sophisticated, right? So instead of they manually type in true, false, correct? Because you know Excel also has what? Excel has logical values. And we're going to talk about them, by the way. So it's one of our future uh, lectures on logic but uh, yes you can do true if you want in Excel you can do false in Excel correct 
of course you have to say equals to false or equals to true correct and um, so it's not a text it's really a very a, a, well let's see Okay, but uh, another way is to get those trues and falses by a checkbox, which makes it again more attractive, more professional. So in order to do that, you need to have the developer tab. And uh, if you click here now in the cell that you want to add a checkbox, then now you can go under insert and add a what? A checkbox. Now there is a form control checkbox and there is an active X control right now we stick to the form control the active X is the one that gives you a, re a, a related associated code in a VBA right and behind the scene you can write the code for it okay and that's where in my last lecture on Excel when I go to micros and VBA I'll talk about that but right now, I don't want to write any uh, Visual Basic code. I just want to directly interact with them. So I use this uh, Form Control checkbox. And here, I'm going to click here. And it gives me a checkbox. And if you don't want this text next to it, just click on the text and get rid of it. Okay? And now if you want this, you see here now if I click, I can check or uncheck it. And if you want more of that, you can just copy and then come to these two cells and uh, well I don't think it got that but that's okay so here add more right and that's it now you can what check or uncheck any of them that you want now how can you link anything to those right let's say here I'm trying to come up with a number and I need to know whether they are checked or not correct so if you check it versus not check it this number should change right so I want to uh, insert an equation a formula here which depends on whether you checked or not so one way here since I don't have VBA code for it and it's not active check mark a uh, checkbox is I can link them to a cell and if I check them it provides a value of true if I uncheck them it provides a value of false so I can show the value of them in an associated cell and then I can link this uh, equation to those cells okay how so here if you right click on this checkbox and say what here is the assigned micro as I said you can make it an active one which takes you as you can see to um, VBA and you have to write the code behind the scene for it which as I said is not the topic of uh, this lecture here but uh, when it gets the time I'll show you so uh, you have to say a new and you see here this is the code this is the VBA code and you have to write VBA but again we'll do that later so right now let's not do any uh, VBA code if you right click here and say format control then uh, you see here you have protection you have size you have colors you have properties right you have alt text and you have control and in the control tab you have somewhere here says cell link and now if you click here you say I want to link it to this cell so whether it's checked or not the value of true or false of it I want to show itself in this cell and you okay that and there we go right now look check it true uncheck it false right and then you can do the similar thing for this guy you can add it to this cell and you can do a similar thing to uh, this one so now if you click on them you can get those true and false values and now you can use those true and false values using an if statement and uh, change the value of the final quote here right so you can uh, create a complicated uh, formula with logics and that's exactly what we're going to do in one of our future lectures
So just wanted to show you how you can add checkboxes and reflect their values in a cell so that you can use it. Or later, as I said, we can write a code, a VBA code for them and take these values in that VBA and apply the code over there. Okay, so hopefully is a simple yet important things are useful for you. I will see you in the future lectures with working on several other topics. Thank you.